not one of the streakers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, you, um, Josh literally has um, uh, about three minutes left, so uh, I'm going to let Josh say a few words, and then I see still a few hands. We'll stay around. I don't have anything else to ask. Okay. Let's keep going with the students. Go ahead. Oh, oh, let's uh, let's come back to you, Ms. Matthew, if we don't mind, because we'll go with, we haven't heard from you yet. Please. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, would common area extend to places like the hallways and dorms, or would it just be like the lobbies of the buildings? It, it, I was wondering if it's like been kind of determined in the bill what that means. Yeah, I think, yeah, again, depends on what hallway, depends on the time. If they're having, if they're having uh, finals that day, and you put up a sign that says, quiet, we're having finals, you know, but if you're, if it's Halloween, and people are dressed in costumes, there's a different threshold. So, but that's why they have some freedom to make those choices. And that, free, that freedom to make those choices and set those parameters varies every day in, in every location. And that's why I think it's important that there are some guidelines out there to set that. You guys have any? I think that's exactly right. You know, the, the notion of time, place, and matter restrictions, uh, how the courts have looked at those, that's not a new notion. And they said, well, your alleged time, place, and manner restriction essentially quells speech. So that's too much. So you can't bury everything in that excuse. And the courts have repeatedly said, context matters. Did you have a question as well? Please. Yeah, well, I just want to commentate on Please? what Professor Silverstein said, which I think is super important about free speech, the importance of free speech challenging traditional orthodoxy and thought. And I think it's kind of can be despairing, uh, particularly on universities, to be perhaps convicted of wrong think by this mob, uh, or, or kind of be discouraged to uh, take on non-traditionalist viewpoints. Um, and I think offensive or, or being offended is quite a, a valuable currency, particular, particularly in academia. And I'm, I think a weapon against that is the concept of harassment and free speech and kind of weighing those two. I'm kind of curious as to what this bill does to draw that distinction and make clear that line between free speech and, and challenging orthodoxy without, you know, the, the, the go-to response would be harassment of, of a sort of protected or, you know, otherwise respected class of people. It's a wonderful question. And the bill explicitly says that harassment, discrimination, I think two other categories, uh, remain prohibited. Now, where's that line drawn? It can't be drawn in the statute. Courts draw those lines. Judges, like Judge Volpe, draws that line. When someone comes in and presents facts and says, well, does it meet the, the definition of harassment or does it meet the definition of simply speech that some people don't like? And every one of those cases will be fact specific. But the statute itself makes clear, or the the bill, hopefully one day a statute, uh, makes clear that in no way do these uh, free speech protections diminish those laws already in place. And it's an excellent question, sir. You know, the, uh, yeah. go ahead. No, no, I'm done. Yeah, the, uh, a lot of people don't understand we write the bills, we don't enforce them. And that, that was one of the things that was brought up multiple times in the committee was they really don't want to deal with time, place, and manner. They, they want to, they want us to write down what it is. And we said, no, we give, we give in bills broad guidelines, and then the courts are the ones who decide where that specific line is, because every case is different. And we're not going to draw that that closely. You know, I've been amazed at the other two places I've been. Uh, I doubt we'd see a raise of hands here. When I asked how many people believe hate speech is illegal, uh, the, uh, I don't believe how many people raised their hand and said that, hey, yes, hate speech is. And then when they find out it isn't illegal, they want to write legislation to make it legal. Matter of fact, there's one of the committee members actually said that out loud, that they don't like the fact that, that people can say mean things to each other. Did you all ever have that experience where you experienced hateful speech in school, something that really upset you? You couldn't? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. From a professor? Uh, more from students and professors, I think, among each other, having these conversations when in mainly these discussion-based classes specific on the policy, that it gets a little murky. And, you know, some people think they can respond, and they do, and then other people don't, and just kind of get butthurt and leave class. Yeah, it's I mean, tough. That's pretty much what happens. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you the story, all, you all the story of when I met uh, Senator Sullivan. Uh, and he tells this story often, and I tell it often, and it probably comes out slightly different from the two of us.